So um, if you're now we can determine whether these are good or bad conclusions. So if uh, the verdict is not guilty and the person is in truth innocent, then that's a good decision. We want that to happen. We want to that, that means the verdict has effectively established the truth or uh, justified the truth. But if the person's innocent but the verdict is guilty, this is an error. Similarly, um, if the verdict is not guilty but the person's really guilty, that's an error. You, you just said that the person is not guilty but they did commit the crime. And if their uh, verdict is guilty and the person's guilty, of course, that's a good uh, conclusion. So in a similar fashion, when we test a hypothesis, we do one of two things. Our, our verdict. Our verdict is either reject the null hypothesis, that means, in other words, accept the alternative, or, um, sorry, I'll do fail first, fail to reject the null hypothesis, or reject the null hypothesis. So this is as if we said not guilty, we can't reject, guilty, we, we will reject. Um, and this is truth. Well, we don't know truth, of course, but we will um, establish what is possible. Either H not is true, or the alternative hypothesis is true. So, if we fail to reject H not, but the null hypothesis is true, that's a good thing because we haven't rejected it and we shouldn't have. So this is an okay situation. But if we do reject H not and we say that no, we're accepting the alternative, but the null hypothesis is true, this is a type one error. So that means in this, in this context that uh, we have rejected when we shouldn't have. Similarly here, if we don't reject H naught and conclude al the alternative, and the alternative is in fact true, we've committed an error. This is called a type two error. And uh, finally, if we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, and the alternative is true, that's a good conclusion. Okay, well, we typically want to limit error. Now we can't avoid it because if the only way to avoid it is by doing a consensus. Um, in other words, sampling the entire population. Otherwise, there will, will always be sampling variability, or i.e., sampling error. So we unfortunately can't limit the type two error because um, we just we don't actually well. The alternative hypothesis is usually stated as a range of values. So for example pi greater than 0.6. For the null hypothesis, if we say pi is equal to 0.6, well, that is a lot, a lot easier to work with than this whole range of values. I'll just say that much. So we can't really narrow the alternative hypothesis, um, the type 2 error down, but we can limit the type 1 error. Now the probability of a type 1 error that we can tolerate is called the alpha level or simply the Greek symbol alpha. So we get to set this and the way we get to set it is we, we make sure that we only reject the null hypothesis under the most stringent circumstances. So given that the null hypothesis is true, if you are in this uh, window, if you are in, in basically this column right here, then the probability of a type 1 error that we're willing to tolerate is called alpha. So given that the null hypothesis is true, that means the other 1 minus alpha of the time you've made a correct decision. So if alpha is 5%, then if you, if you only commit an error 5% of the time, then you won't commit an error 95% of the time. Uh, for a type 2 error, we actually call that something else. We call it uh, a beta level. So if your alternative hypothesis is true and you fail to reject, that's an error, and that's referred to by the uh, Greek letter B, which is re read as beta. And then this would be 1 minus beta, given that you're in this column. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about these right now. We're going to focus on limiting this. OK, so usually we, s we set alpha in advance, because you want to know what error you're willing to tolerate. So we set alpha in advance. Typical choices include